Hi, my name is Adrian and I'm from Australia. In this video, we're going to take a look at the CSS property called box shadow. It's a pretty simple property that just allows you to add shadow effects to different elements. And while it's probably been used quite often, not many people use it to its full potential. There's lots of different things you can do to it, like setting offsets, setting blurs, different colors. But really what I like having a look at is adding depth to your pages and adding animations. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how we can apply it in different ways. We're going to have a look at a few different examples and hopefully it'll give you a better understanding of how to utilize it in your own project in the future. So if you like this kind of content and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. And let's just jump right into it. Here we have the previous project we worked on. It was doing some transition effects. I've removed all the CSS styling and HTML, but if you want to see this code in practice, you can have a look at the previous video. What we're going to do here is have a look at the box shadow effect. We're going to type in box shadow. And usually we start off with none, which means that there is no box shadow. If we want to create one, we simply pass two values, which are the X and Y offsets and a color. So let's try this now. We'll do maybe five pixels and 15 pixels, and we'll make the color say red. In here, you can have a look at the element and you can see that to the right, there's a five pixel offset and to the bottom, there's a 10 pixel offset. That's pretty standard stuff. Now, the other thing we can do is add a blur. We add this after the offset. Let's add a blur of maybe 10 pixels. If we do that, we can see that there is a nice shadow of a red color. Of course, this doesn't look that great because on the page, it's just sort of out there. So another thing you can do is instead of using a color like FF4800, we can actually pass in an RGBA value. I much prefer that because it gives you more flexibility of how you do your shadows. In here, I'll pass in RGBA and do 0, 0, 0 for black. And if we do one, it'll just be a black color. But what we can do is we can do a 0 0.5, which makes it a little bit more gray. And personally, I like about 1.5, which makes it a very subtle gray. Now we can see there is a bit of depth coming in through our box. We can make this more visible by adding a background color. Let's add a background to the body of maybe EF, EF, EF. Then let's have a look at making the background of the article white. Now we can see that the element has some very nice depth to it. It's almost floating off the page and gives that 3D sort of feel, which is really cool. Personally, though, I don't like the fact that it's off center. It's almost as if there's a sun coming in from the top left and the shadow is being cast to the bottom right. So normally I don't use the X axis. I only use the Y axis. And that way it looks a little bit more clean, especially for a web page. You've probably seen these types of shadows before. Google often uses them, especially with their material design, which is essentially a number of docs which tell them how to keep consistent styling across all their different types of websites. The docs are very good at showing how the depth of different elements should look like and how much shadow you should apply when they're elevating off the screen. It's very useful. They also have material UI, which is a bunch of components that are already pre-made with the applied shadows and styling. So it makes it easy to get up and running if you have a new website. I'll link it in the description below if you want to use it. But personally, I just prefer to do it myself because it gives me more fine tuned control to get it working exactly how I want for the website I want. Next, let's have a look if we can transition some of these shadows during hover effects. What we'll do is we'll create a hover effect down here. We'll apply and hover and we'll also add a transition. For the transition, we'll do 0.25 seconds ease and we'll do it on the box shadow effect. For this, we'll try and make this shadow a little bit bigger and see how that looks. What we can do here is maybe we'll make this 30 pixels and maybe make it a little bit darker, but making it 0.3 opacity. Now, if we hover over it, we can see that it's expanding out a little bit. It's almost looking like it's coming out of the page. However, it still stays the same size. So another thing we can do is we can also transition a transform into there and make it a little bit bigger. Let's put that in now. Let's do transform with an ease of 0.25 seconds. And in here, let's apply the transform. What we'll do is we'll do a transform scale and make it only a tiny little bit of maybe 0 0.025, which is not even, point, it's about 2.5%. If we apply this, we can see that 
now the box is almost coming forward towards you and out of the page. It's getting a little bit bigger and it's got that nice depth to it so that you get that 3D sort of feel. All right, so now with the first type of hover effect done, let's create another one. Let's create version two here in our code and let's create styling for version one, which will move away and create version two. Let's do margin bottom is 15 pixels so we can have some spacing between the two elements. And let's copy across this to an and.v1, paste it in here. And let's keep the transition up above and the box shadow up above. So for version two, what I'm thinking is rather than in version one where the element is getting closer towards you, in this case, it'll be getting closer towards the page. So essentially the shadow will be getting a little bit smaller, but also a little bit darker. So to do that, it's quite simple. Let's just make these elements smaller. Maybe we'll do five pixels and say 10 pixels. So that's five pixels off the Y axis and 10 pixels for the blur. We'll keep it going a little bit darker, which we've already applied before. For the scaling, we'll also want it to be a little bit smaller. So maybe we'll do something like 0 0.985, which is just the smallest fraction smaller than what it used to be. If we take a look at it now, this one is getting a bit smaller, you can see now, and it feels like it's getting closer towards the page. Let's put a version two in here. So now we've got one that's going bigger. This one's getting further away from the page. This one's getting closer towards the page. We could probably make this a little bit neater by maybe adding a 15 pixel here and maybe make it even darker. So now if we have a look at it, yep, that's definitely getting closer to the page. I don't know about the X axis there. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too much. So maybe we'll do that as 10 pixels and see how that looks. There, that looks all right. I think it's a little bit too dark still. Let's make it 0 0.3 again and have a look how that looks. Maybe we'll make this five pixels, 10 pixels, and let's see how that works out. Great. So that's about the same amount now as the top element. So the top element is coming out by maybe one Z axis and the bottom element is going down one Z axis, which is really cool. Great, so now we've got our two hover effects. One feels like it's getting closer towards you. It's expanding, its shadow is increasing, whereas the other one is getting a little bit smaller. The shadow is decreasing, but getting darker. So you definitely feel like it's up against the wall where this one is further away from it. There's one more shadow effect I wanted to show you, which is neomorphism. It's sort of bringing in the old school types of shadow effects together with the new ones of flat UI and depth, but it essentially means having a lighter shadow on the top and a darker one on the bottom. Let's create a version three article here. And what we'll do is we'll apply some of the pr these principles and see what it looks like. If we go down here, it's not really about the hover effect, but it's more about how it looks when you're using it. Let's have a look at this box shadow here and we're gonna separate it out to a top bit and a bottom bit. So what we'll do is we'll copy this box shadow up here. If we wanna create neomorphism, we essentially create a reverse of what we're doing at the bottom. So here we'll have maybe an offset of five, five with blur of 10 and it's a black color, but for the bottom, we'll have negative five pixels and negative five pixels. We'll make the color white and this will essentially mean that it applies at the very top. We'll also make it darker because white isn't a very strong color. And finally, we'll also make it a bit stronger by applying a five pixel spread. Now with that done, the only other thing we need to do is making the background a little bit darker, maybe making it F1, F1, F1. If we take a look at it now, it does have that neomorphism. It sort of looks like it's coming out of the page. We could probably make it a little bit stronger in terms of that effect. We can also create a nice hover effect for this. Let's copy it below and maybe we'll expand it out. So it seems like it's sort of fizzling out. Maybe making it 20, 20 and for the border radius, something like 60 and making it a little bit lighter. And then for the bottom section, we'll do negative 20, negative 20. Uh, maybe in here, we'll do something like 60 again and this will go back to zero and maybe 0 0.5. If we have a look at this hover now, we can see it's sort of, it's phasing out. 
We can also probably make the background a little bit darker just to make it a little bit more transparent that a hover is happening. Let's maybe make it uh, E, F, E, F, E, F and see how that looks. So yeah, that looks pretty good and hopefully gives you an example of what neomorphism looks like in practice. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of how to use box shadows within your development. Whether it's a website or an app, box shadows are very useful anyway. I've done a previous video on just doing basic hover transitions as well as doing just some styled components if you're using React, so check those out. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe because it lets me know what kind of content you guys want. Thank you.